The iPhone. The iPhone. Welcome everybody to another daily vlog. A vlog that happens sometimes in the back of my truck. I am here to tell you the five, five things that I like about iOS and the iPhone 7 Plus. Yesterday I did a video about the seven things, or the five things that, the seven things, it's because it's a seven, the five things that I dislike about the new iPhone from a first impressions type of view. Today I'm going to tell you about the five good things that I like about the new iPhone first impressions view. Now I've, yesterday I only had about two hours with the phone as I was setting it up and kind of downloading stuff that I needed to use that it, because I'm, I got this to make my life easier. I got this to make my life easier. I got this to make my life easier. Hoping that this would fall in line with the other things that make my life easier. Especially, I, I, well, I, I got to tell you what's on the list first because there is a couple things that this will assist in making my life easier over things like this. So let me go ahead and get to it and get to today's video. One thing that I really like about this phone is the size. In comparison, it's about the same size as my Nexus 6, just a little bit smaller. Actually, it's just a little bit smaller than the Samsung Note 4 Edge. They're basically the same length. It's just the edge is just a little bit wider, just basically because it does have this side screen. Compared to the Note 5, they're basically the same size. The Note 5 and the, and the what is this called? The iPhone 7 Plus are basically the same size. Same length, same width, same screen real estate, pretty much basically. But that's about where it ends. That's about where the similarities end. Whereas this device, an Android device, is fully customizable. I could do anything I want to it. I could put widgets on the screen. I can put I could put a clock, like there's a clock right here, though you can't see it because I got a black and white background. I could I could add things. I could do a long press, and then I got all these options down here for wallpapers, for different widgets that I could add to my screen. I could theme. I got different themes I can put on Android devices. All these awesome wallpapers. I could totally customize, make as many screens as I want, and keep as many screens empty. I don't have to have a whole bunch of clutter on my screens. iOS, on the other hand, it's nothing but clutter. There is no app drawers. There is nothing else on iOS like there is over here on Android, where I could just open up an app drawer and go through every app that is on my device and drag it on or off of my home screen and put it right back in the app drawer if I want to. There is basically zero customization on iOS, but that's okay. That's okay. It's something I can live with because I did not get this device to customize it. One of the things I did get this device for was the size, the screen real estate. I like bigger phones. This is comparable to all my Android devices except for my Nexus 4, my trusty Nexus 4, which I still feel this is better than the new iPhone. But I do really like the screen size. So this is number one. Screen size, screen size, screen size. I've gotten really used to having larger phones. Number two. It just feels good in the hand. This actually feels really good in the hand. It has nice edges. They're soft. 
they're comfortable though it is a little bit slippery i mean i did set it on my leg today and whoop, it just slipped right out so I, I i'm thinking about a case for this thing because if you have one you're going to definitely need something to protect it because it will slide even here on this table it's slippery slippery I mean, so are these because these are all glass, but this just seems a little bit extra slippery. But it really does. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It does feel good in the hand. I think the Note 5 feels good in the hand. It, I just don't think, I don't feel like I'm going to drop this as much because it does have these metal edges that kind of stick out a little bit. So I don't feel like I'm going to be talking and, and what are you talking about? I didn't say that and, and, and yell at my phone and feel like it's going to fly out of my hand. I don't feel like that with this device so much. But if I was talking on the phone here with the iPhone and I'm mad, it's I got to be careful because just barely flicking it, it feels like it's just going to slide right out. But the size and the feel... It, it does feel good. I, I, I can tell you it does feel good in the hand. Number three, when I went into the store to purchase, well, I didn't actually purchase this. I didn't, there was no out of pocket expense on my end. If you don't use your phones for a long time, make sure to keep them charged. Sorry, Nexus. But the main reason I went into the store was because I actually needed a phone with a lot more gigs. All my devices are 32 gigs. Every device I have is 32 gigs. This phone is 32 gigs. The phone I'm talking to you guys on right now is 32 gigs with expandable storage. But still, it's 32 gigs. I needed a lot larger gigs within the phone built in main reason the Samsung I'm talking to you guys on right now the S7 Edge has expandable storage you could put a memory card in it an SD card and uh, add up you know you could add storage but the problem is you download stuff from the Play Store a lot of the applications and stuff will not go on to the SD card so there goes your 32 gigs it just eats them on down it eats your gigs down not only does the operating system take up 7 gigs on Samsung devices, what, what's it called, TouchWiz? Uh, yeah, that's what it's called, TouchWiz. TouchWiz uses 7 gigabytes. That's a lot. That really eats into your 32 gigs right there. I don't know how much I, I, the iOS 10, whatever it is running, 10.1, I don't know how much that uses. So let's say that uses 7 gigs, and I only got a 32 gig iPhone. With no expandable storage, I'd be screwed. So I actually went in there looking for a phone that had a lot, either 64 gigs or above of built-in storage for videos, 4K, you know, so I could put 4K and stuff like that and shoot longer videos because I am planning to fly to Las Vegas again for CES this year and I wanted to have enough room on my mobile devices for recording video while I'm at CES or while I'm out walking the strip of Las Vegas and doing things because storage is the key. I don't really worry too much about the operating system. I'm not going to use this as a, a mobile phone. I'm not going to use this for anything other than video. Video storage, video editing, much like I do on my other devices. But I could only shoot maybe 20 minutes of video, of high quality video, and I'm done. I'm done. I would have, and, and editing would, I, I couldn't edit because then there's two videos. They take up double the storage until I delete one of them. So sometimes I'll be editing video and then I'll go to, uh, what do they call that? I'm not good at video editing. But, so you, you go to transfer your, your video. Does that make sense? I, I don't know. But by the time you're done video editing, you have the original videos that you had, then the video that you edited. So it kind of doubles the gigs. And sometimes you can't store 
the video you just created out of the videos you already shot. I needed more damn storage. I got it in this device. I, there was other devices at the store I could have grabbed that were 64 gig and they would have been Android devices. I would have been comfortable using them like the LG V20 was the only phone that they had that was 64 gig stock other than Apple devices. The 6Ps that they had, the Pixels that they had, everything that the store had were all 32 gigs. I only had two options. I had the new LG and I had iOS. So I, since I've never had an iOS phone, I said, what the heck, let's give it a shot. Number four, some Google services. I've been able to add some Google services. So if, I don't know if this is catching it here. Let's focus. The screen's so bright, but I do have Google search here. Boy, and let's see if, I don't know. Can you guys see that or is it just washing out? Is that washing out? I wonder if I dim it. How do you dim? Oh. Let's see if I drag down. That's notifications. Maybe I have to drag up. Let's dim it. Can you see? Oh, no. No, I dimmed it. You still can't see it though. But I do have Google Plus. I have Google Drive. I have... Uh, what are all my Google? I have Google Navigation. I have Google Keep, Google Calendar, Duo, Allo, and and uh, Hangouts. So I was able to install a lot of my Google services on an iOS device. So that's another good thing. That's something else that I liked. They don't work the same as they do on Android, but at least I have them. So so far, that was number four. I have the size of the screen. It feels good in your hand, number two, 256 gigs, that's three. Number four is I was able to put Google stuff on. Number five, and last but not least, let's turn this off. Hear that? Listen. The buttons are nice and clicky. When they put these phones together, they remind me a lot of HTC. Actually, a lot of people in the media said the new Google Pixel is a copy of the iPhone. I disagree. Why? Because HTC makes the new Google Pixel. S Apple actually paid HTC so HTC wouldn't sue Apple if they could use their design. So Apple copied HTC, and this looks pretty much like the HTC One Series phones. Last year's, I think, was even worse because they had the line. So they actually really did look like an HTC One. Uh, so no, I think Apple looks like a Pixel and Apple looks like the HTC One. But that being said, the HTC One and the Pixel both have really good buttons on them. The click, the clickiness and the button placement, it's just nice and clicky. Even the volume rockers are nice and clicky and you could feel, you could feel them. So like if I'm holding the phone and I, and I wanna turn the power on, I know where the power button is. It's nice and clicky. I know where the volumes are and I know whatever this button is. I don't know what that button is just yet. But you do have the up, the volume up, the volume down, and the power button. It's well put together. So that's something else I like about it. But the Note 5 is the same way. It's just as clicky. I don't know if you can hear. The volume, volume up, volume down. It does. It they. It, it's like Apple took a note from other manufacturers when they created this device. I mean, nice, clicky, tactile buttons. You can feel where they are. So that's number five. I like the button placements, and I like the way the buttons feel. That's it. That's all I. That's all I can like about it so far. The size feels good in the hand. The gigabytes. That's the most important. I got some good Google stuff on there, 
and the button placements and the way they feel. That's all I like so far about it. The dislikes, I, I actually, instead of doing five, I did six because right when I opened up, up and started doing stuff, the dislikes just started popping out. I really had to dig for good stuff. I'm not going to use this phone as a daily driver. There's no way I could use the iPhone 7 Plus as a daily driver. It wouldn't suit my needs. There's nothing on here. The multitasking is terrible. It's terrible. I actually was downloading Google Photos. To update my Google Photos, I had to leave the application open. You know, on a normal device, I can sit here, download stuff from the Play Store, and if there's an update or something like that, it'll run in the background. I could do other things while thing while things are updating. Apple wouldn't let me do that. It would not let me update the photos, Google Photos, with the app being closed. So I that there's things I really dislike about it that will stop me from using that as a daily driver. But it's definitely going to get its use in Vegas as a storage device. That's and, and you know what? That's what I bought it for. I didn't have high expectations for an iPhone. So coming from Android to iOS, there's no way Apple can make me switch. At this moment in time, there's no way I could just be strictly an iOS user. I know there's people out there that can, but it's not me. Not me at all. All right, everybody, I am out of here. That was day one of an Android user jumping on the iOS bandwagon and then kind of hopping off a little bit. It, It's going to be, this is going to be like my motorcycle and this is going to be my little sidecar. So I'll be riding my motorcycle, but I'll store my groceries as I drive home in my sidecar. So I'm not going to ride in my sidecar. I'll ride on this, but I will use this to store my groceries. Right? All right, everybody. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.